Hello there. This video, I want to talk about AOS a little bit. Um, I think it's going to be a bit of a mess. Uh, but before I do that, I'd just like to... This is just a general video where I'm just going to have a bit of a natter about various bits and pieces to do with Warhammer. Um, I haven't really got any kind of... There's no big news release or anything. Uh, I just think that there's a lot of stuff coming out with AOS that is going to be a mess. Um, so let's just talk about that to begin with, to be honest. Uh, I've actually finally managed to build a dwarf army list that I'm quite happy with. So I know I know the dwarves that I'm going to buy now. Look, I remember to turn the mic off while coughing. Um, okay. Oh, I've, I've still got it too close to my face, haven't I? That's better, isn't it? People keep complaining about that. Right, okay. Uh, I'm not actually John Peel. Um, right. Uh, what was I going to talk about? There was one article where... That one. I want to talk about combat in AOS. I want to talk about spells in AOS. Um, that's a lovely model. Um... This is the thing with AOS, like they've produced some really, really stonkingly good models. Uh, oh, there's some more Warhammer events. When was that released? Yesterday. Oh, I missed that. I was I've been driving all day yesterday. I started at about six yesterday and I didn't get home till about eleven last night, so I haven't really been keeping an eye on stuff. So combat. What's changed? So what they've said is, so in AOS at the moment, you have a start of, of combat phase, an end of combat phase, and a within combat phase. So the combat phase is actually split into three phases in AOS at the moment. So they've said there's no more start of phase or end of phase subphases. In each phase, the active player uses their abilities, and then their opponent does the same. So there is, there's no start of phase, but then there is. <laughs> But the start of phase is when you do abilities. Um, you still also have strikes first and strikes last effects. So we've got rid of start of phase and end of phase, although we haven't because we're still doing strikes first and strikes last. So there is a start of phase and an end of phase. And actually, another thing we've introduced is another start of phase phase. So we have a start of phase phase, <laughs> start of start of phase, for doing combat abilities. Then we have a start of phase for doing strikes first. Then we have within phase for doing everything else. And then we have strikes last going end of phase. <laughs> so we've simplified it by going from three separate phases to now four. Um, but all your abilities you do at the beginning now, which has tidied it up massively. <clears throat> so it used to be that stuff like, I think Crystal Touch was like end of phase. So you got to do their normal attacks and then at the end of the phase you got to do like Crystal Touch or, or whatever. Um, I mean some of these are quite interesting and it's, you know, they're trying to make it more interactive. And a lot of people, what a lot of people don't like about the old world is that it's a proper I go, you go. Like there's very little for you to actually do in your opponent's turn. The thing that I would say is because there's no double turn mechanic, actually, once their turn's over, it is it is your turn. Uh, the 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 reason that they have to increase introduce all this like interactivity in Age of Sigma is that if somebody's got an army that takes a long time to get through a turn, and then they get a double turn, I I you know I've been at a tournament before where I think we've been going for about an hour and a half of my opponent going through two of their turns and I've done almost nothing for about an hour and a half and it's so boring um, so <clears throat> so in fact <laughs> in fact there's now five phases because fight abilities there's a start of phase and end of phase so actually this is disingenuous because this is split into three effectively three phases um, piling's the same, everything else is the same, pretty much. Now, this is like...
Instead of allocating damage points to a model in a unit, damage points are now allocated to the unit as a whole. When the total of damage points allocated to a unit equals the health characteristic of that unit, the commanding player removes a model from the unit, but they must stay in coherency. That's exactly the same as it is at the moment, right? So, it's just that everybody's been playing AOS wrong. Um, I was a stickler for this because I had lots of I typically had lots of weird ward saves being a slave to darkness player so I'd always 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 create a, a wound pool so basically when somebody rolls successful wound rolls against you, you just make a wound pool of, of stuff and then after they've done you know after you've done all wounds and saves and all that kind of stuff then you roll your wards and armor saves and so on and so forth it just makes way more sense to do that in AOS because, and, and indeed, that is the rule. That is how AOS works. So they're saying that we're changing it to be something, that, but it's not different. It's the same. It's just they've reworded it to make people actually do the. I mean, unless there is some other change that they've. Like, why does this make a difference? Well, it makes a difference for like. I don't know, for Corn Bloodbound, because, like, Corn would... Uh, they get to fight on death and stuff like that, or they do effects when you kill a model, basically. So, you know, I mean... that There is a reason for them to... But, I mean, that it makes no difference anyway. They have, interestingly, um, started to introduce a lot of universal special rules for stuff in AOS, which is quite interesting. So Spears of anti-charge, plus one rend. So I'm presuming what that means is when they get charged, they get an extra rend, so they go to rend two. Um, you know, which is, you know, which is, which is quite good. Um... These Croxigal have anti-infantry, so if they're hitting infantry, they're Ren 2. So, you know, we'll we'll see. Retreat has changed as well, so you can just retreat, but you take D3. More, mortal damage. So they've got rid of mortal wounds, and they're just calling it mortal damage. But mortal wounds cause damage anyway, so that's not... that's the, It's the same. What they've done is they've... I think this addition is like... It's quite cynical um aos the new edition of aos seems to me to be quite cynical in that they've not really changed a lot in fact they've hardly changed anything what they've done is they've changed the words for things and sort of changed the order of of things but this could have all have been done in a <coughs> in a in a in a in a general's handbook or like they could have done an errata or whatever like this is not you know, this is, I, mean, I don't know, I don't, I mean, I know it's Games Workshop's design, like, business model, like, every four years we, the thing that I keep criticising Games Workshop about is that they're constantly chasing new customers rather than maximising the income they get from existing customers. So how do you maximise income from existing customers, right, J just as a business principle? It's quite a simple, subscriptions, right? You, you get people to subscribe to your products and you get them to go for more and more expensive subscriptions all the time. You don't go after new customers. You have a very heavy subscriber model. It's, you know, it's how Sky operates. Sky TV, for instance, operates by getting subscriptions. In fact, all broadband providers, their job really is not to entice new customers, although some of them get confused and do that anyway. But their job is to keep their existing customers and get their existing customers to upgrade to more and more expensive subscriptions, right? <clears throat> it's to increase the quality of the service and, and get people to pay you more every month. So that's how you deal with existing customers. You get them to subscribe to stuff, whereas Games Workshop have this obsession with acquiring new customers. And it's so dumb from a business perspective because... Sorry, I've really got a frog in my throat to this today. Um, but it's really done from a business perspective because it's it's like 10 times harder 
to get new business than it is to sell something to an existing customer. Um, they've got some stuff about magic. So, number in brackets determines the number of spell and bind and banish abilities they can use per phase. So, keyword wizard 2 could fire off a single spell and still attempt to banish an endless spell or invocation. Uh, I don't know what an invocation is. Maybe that's the endless prayers. Now, I think they did get changed to invocation. So wizards can now get rid of prayers, but possibly. But, I mean, they should have been able to anyway, to be honest. But <clears throat> um, You can attempt to cast... So it's like the opposite of, of, of Warhammer the Old World. They've basically said that you know all the spells in your spell law. But you're limited to what you can what you can cast by this particular number here. So this weird knob shaman is wizard one. They can attempt to cast one spell or banish an endless spell. That's their that's their choices, and they can cast this spell. That's the casting roll. Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, you can make a reaction, which is. This just seems forced. Like, what, you know, somebody's, like, I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it just feels a bit weird how they've, like, put everything in little, like, reaction. Like, I, d I don't, even unlimited spells can't be repeatedly cast. No more than one, unless the spell has the new unlimited keyword. So some spells you can cast over and over again, but not by the same wizard, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then there's some stuff about prayers. Um, you know, which is uh, more or less the same as it was. There's no, you know, um, uh, so it looks like though the incantations, um, are they do have a score, so I don't know how they're cast, it doesn't say anything about that. But they've got a score, and then you can try and banish them, basically. So, you know, whatever. Which is what they should have had in the first place, because endless prayers were just ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> they've done something about battle packs. They're the same. There is some stuff about underdogs, which I don't know whether I like that as a mechanic. They say it makes it, like, a bit more... makes every game a bit more tense and a bit more tight, but... <coughs> Sorry, I missed the button. Um, but like rewarding players for <laughs> getting behind. I mean, okay. I suppose it, it depends what they've done with, you know, battle tactics and... Uh, they have got battle tactics. They've presumably got battle tactics and... Um, and uh, like grand strategies and stuff like that, they've presumably kept all of that kind of all of that kind of mechanic. The scoring for like winning battles seems to be the same. Um, they've got some terrain tables which look quite good actually. I mean, I think a lot of people have been crying out for those for quite a long time, really. Um, they started doing terrain tables for setups in Warcry, which I thought was brilliant. I love that about Warcry because it just tells you where to put all the terrain and the terrain and the scenario. But Warcry wasn't as like impactful. It, did, it didn't matter as much, I suppose. Well, I, may, I never played it competitively, so maybe that was that was why. Maybe I should do that, go to a Warcry tournament. But if you look at this battle plan for the Vice, it's, you know, you've got... At your terrain, you're told where to put the terrain. There doesn't seem to be any option. It's just that's the that's the setup for the thing, which is fine. But like, <clears throat> I quite like you know quite like having some options. Really, it's just I don't know. 
I quite I actually really liked the terrain rules. It's just a pity that nobody ever played by them. That you basically had to deploy the terrain, but you could benefit you. There was one tournament I went to called Bobo back in the day. This is pre COVID. Um and it was over at Lincoln and basically they they were quite clever with the with the you know, with the terrain and that you could each I can't remember how they did it. I can't remember to be honest, but to, you could actually use the terrain to your advantage and you could like put the terrain where you wanted it to be to an extent so you know that was a pretty good tournament from a kind of terrain management perspective but this being just fixed you know i mean it's fine but it's um yeah i'm not I'm not i'm not I'm not sure, really. Um, and the vice, it's the the vice already exists as a scenario. It's the same. Uh, oh no, it's not because you score two victory points for controlling one objective. Two if you've got two. Two if you've got more. Okay, so they're changing the points. So you get two for one objective, another two for two or more, so it goes up to four, and then six if you've got one two more. Uh, score two if there's no enemy units within six of the remaining objective in the middle at the end score four victory points for battle tactics so they've basically just inflated the well they've inflated that one border war one two yeah because it was one 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 wasn't it I oh know these these are the same aren't they yeah they've just inflated battle tactics and uh, yeah I don't know um, what's this season rules new honor god and they're still yeah, we're going to make it a lot simpler by adding temporary rules <laughs> I'm so glad that they're not actually supporting the old world that much really because like you know, um, <laughs> it means they're not faffing about with it all the time. We've got a stable-ish game, and they seem to be managing it quite well. And, you know, I really liked w the old Warhammer because you got an army book, like, once a year, maybe, and the game was pretty stable. Like, I can't remember when 5th edition was, was released, but it was, like, was it late 90s or something? And 6th edition was, like, mid naughty. So we had, like, a good six or seven years they seem to think that by relaunching their core games every four years which is their strategy now aos and 40k have a four-year time frame right and they've locked in exactly how they do it and they come up with all these narrative books and again they're constantly selling like just new stuff to new people um so they've got this four-year cycle locked in but like I'm glad we don't have that for the old world. Um, do you know what? I might pick up Horus Heresy actually if it's if it's similarly. Although I've then, I've then definitely gone down the nostalgia bait. Um, but then again, Heresy is not the same as the old world, is it? Because Heresy is literally just Space Marines and some other you know minor factions, rather than it being a fully fleshed out you know reimagined like 40k you know sixth edition or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so we've got this honor guard minus one from attacks from enemy oh just oh so everybody's got to yeah like what why anyway whatever uh so there's more events that they've announced oh that's that looks like a map of America. Oh, there's the map of Texas. There's the flag of Texas. I saw. I, I was looking at an event the other day, and there was a there was a on a Mometa show on Monday, and there was a uh, this flag, and I was like, "What the hell is that? It looks like Chile." <laughs> so um, I'm glad I, uh, I I'm glad I'm reliving that 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 uh, moron. Uh, my period as a moron. Uh, I probably should remember the state's flags, really. But anyway, um, buy tickets. What for? US Open Series? 
Uh, Warhammer World events. So these are the ones I'd be interested in. Mortal Realms Reforged. Uh, US Open. Okay, so they're doing a whatever. Uh, oh, 2,000 points. Ah, oh, now, I, I, ooh, 31st of August and 1st of September. I might be doing that. I might be doing that. Uh, depends if it conflicts with rugby or any other strong money sort of things, but uh, I might be doing that. It's on the sale 6th of May. Cool. So that's that. Cool, and the last thing I want to talk about is this dwarf list that I've come up with. I'm quite happy with it, to be honest. Any dwarf players, let me know what you think. It's not going to be massively... I think the only... The thing that dwarves seem to be struggling with is winning by lots. So you've really got to have, like, an army that can dish out a lot of damage. And dwarves aren't really doing that at the moment. So... <coughs> I say I've dished out a lot of damage. I've gone for a king with the Master Rune of Adamant, so he's Toughness 10. Rune of Cleaving, Rune of the Furnace, uh, Rune of rune of Passage. So Rune of the Furnace gives him a 3 plus ward against flaming attacks. There's a lot of stuff that has flaming attacks, so I think for 5 points it's worthwhile having. Rune of Passage giving move through cover to our unit is quite important. And Rune of Cleaving, I think, it just gives him another another AP. So he's got a great weapon anyway, so he's got an AP3 great weapon. So that's pretty cool. Um, and as it's got a rune on it, I think it gives it magic attacks as well. But I'm not sure. Anyway, so you got a king. Um, we've got the Master Rune of Grunyi here, which is the one where you get ward saves, basically. So you got a king, you got a thane BSB, you got a runesmith with the master rune of uh, balance and another rune of the furnace. Master rune of balance is like basically a dispel scroll every turn, so that's pretty good. Um, and essentially we've got a big block of rangers to pop up as scouts. They're BS4, so they're really good, they're really reliable. Um, so they can pop up as scouts and just be like an early pain in the backside you've got long beards because they can be drilled and hammerers who are drilled automatically so the long beards and the hammerers now what have i given them the long beards i'll tell you how all this comes together in a sec but the ooh, long beards i've given stolas rune so they get vanguard right and uh <laughs> yeah vanguard how useful is that on a unit on a unit with movement three? Not very, but you know. <laughs> um, and then we've got some hammerers with master rune of hesitation. Have I misclicked? Actually, did I mean to put astrologer's rune, or did I click on? Did I mean to do, just do that? Yeah, because you can't, you can't, you can't march with Vanguard, which is super, super annoying. Um, uh, so anyway, so we've got Rune Battle there. Yeah. So one of the characters, probably the king, goes with. This is my idea in my head. Oh yeah, and there's three gyrocopters, all with steam guns. Why steam guns? Because I think steam guns, one steam gun is not massively effective, but three of them. So if you flew all three of those around an enemy like unit and then all three of them blasted it, it's going to do a lot of damage. So I think overlapping the steam guns uh, on top of each other, you know, is really, really super effective. You just got to be super careful about making sure they don't get charged or making sure they're not near skirmishes or something like that. Um, they're really good for dealing with scouts and skirmishes and stuff like that. And the steam guns means that you can just you can just be a bit more careful and a bit more discerning about you know making sure that you're getting hits with it. Whereas the other weapon options, you can't guarantee hits. Whereas these you know, a steam gun guarantees hits. It also guarantees that you're a lot closer. But they're also for starters just cheaper. But I think you know I think oh, that's the hand weapon, isn't it? Steam gun doesn't work. But I think I think the steam gun is the best option um, out of all the weapons. Because the brimstone gun, 
you know, it's multiple shots, so you're down to fives to hit already. It's range 18, so you're probably hitting on sixes. What's the point, right? I mean, yes, they've got quick shots, so you can stand and shoot and then whatever. These have got multiple shots, but again, it's multiple shots, so it's minus one to hit already. Range 24, you might be in short range, so you might be hitting fives. Um, probably hitting sixes, like it's move and shoot, whatever. Like, I just think steam guns... Uh, you know, it's a it's a strength three breath weapon. So yeah, you're not allowed to march and shoot with it, like the others can march and shoot. But again, like sixes to hit is not really very helpful. Um, they've got a decent fly move anyway. They have got fly nine, so and they do do impact hits. So you can spend turn one basically. Spend turn one, uh, and they've got Vanguard, so they get to move nine inches on the first turn anyway. So you can start to sort of spread them out around the flanks and then move your 18 and then turn two onwards. Then they're doing damage basically. Um, but yeah, and they're only 60 points, so they've, they've got a lot of out, a lot of potential output for just 60 points. So I think they're, they're worthwhile taking anyway. So you've got the hammerers. Uh, which probably the king goes in, or maybe the thane. I'm not sure really. You got the long beard. Now the point of the long beards and the hammers is that they've both got drilled, so you deploy them in marching columns, so you can at least move them nine inches. If there's terrain in the way of where the long beards want to march or the hammers, you just stick the king in it, so it doesn't reduce their move. So they get to go nine inches every turn, and that's super super important. They've both got drilled, so they can both like. Um, reform before they charge if if they're going to get a charge off obviously but that just means that you can get these units like way further up field and because you've got a BSB um, in these units I mean I think Longbeards have got they got stubborn they got shield wall sorry uh, and veteran they haven't got stubborn but they've got shield wall so shield wall is quite a cool ability so if it was going to fall back in good order, it might give ground instead. So with the BSB being nearby, I mean, you're likely to pass your test. So you can just like shield wall and hold them up and then like hit them again. Um, as well as that, I've got obviously three crack missiles with this troll hammer torpedo. Like iron drakes, I think as a unit are okay. Um, yeah, they're okay. Uh, what's runes awarding? Five plus save. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they're okay as units, but they've got an iron warden who's got a ballistic skill of five. They're drilled as well, <laughs> or they can be. That's optional. But this is a twenty-four inch strength a AP three multiple wounds D three. It's as good as a cannon, basically. So this is a ninety-six point cannon that you can auto hit. You know something with. So if if your opponent's got large targets or whatever, you know it's pretty good um, against that. So this is this is like basically having three cannons. So that's like your artillery dealt with. So if somebody's got like a dragon or whatever, troll hammer torpedoes. Yeah, you're gonna roll twos to hit, obviously, because that's what you you're gonna roll ones to hit, because obviously that's what you know you need twos. But I think that's uh, yeah. And then you got a bolt thrower with the rune of skewering, which is just so good. Because it because makes it strength 7 and no armor save. So it basically puts its AP up, which I think is pretty good. I mean, yeah, it's probably going to miss <laughs> more often than not. But that's why I think you need the rune of skewering, because it just makes it way more effective. Um, and that's my dwarf list, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that would be quite good. I think that would be quite effective. Because you've got a bit of magic defense. You've got a BSB who's giving, who's kicking out a decent ward save. And basically the whole army advances up the field, right? Uh, the rangers are there just to essentially cause a problem on one flank. You've got three gyrocopters to cause problems on another flank. And then you've got two big blocks of dwarves that are actually quite tough to kill just implacably marching up the field and if your opponent's shooting heavy then fine you're loving it because you've got 16 rangers that you've just deployed you know in skirmish formation um you know and they're unit strength one so they're minus one to hit so you got all these rangers with ballistic skill four you know with crossbows you know which are which are pretty pretty good 
Uh, don't they have dwarf crafted? Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, don't don't suffer minus one for stun and shoot, do they? No. Cool. But yeah, so they can stand still and just like pepper the enemy with shots if they're shooting heavy or whatever. Um. And I've got eight points spare. I'm not sure about adding a cannon because I think that you know you've, the Iron Drakes are basically this is three cannons that are a bit more manoeuvrable and have more wounds and are tougher in general. So cool. That's my uh, that's my take on uh, AOS. I think it's going to be there was there was something else as well that actually that I saw that I just wanted to talk to you about uh was it that uh, i can't remember oh yeah modular rules so what they're saying is that essentially they've got like core rules which is which which are not going to change that's the entire edition so you've got these for the next four years if you're an aos player and then you've got advanced rules, and they're basically going to swap these rules out for new rules for each module. So that, that allows them to rewrite a module. Like, and the and the rules have been structured in a modular manner, says Ben, the project developer for the game. This means you can learn and play the rules with core rules, and then when you need them, you can go to learn on the advanced rules. You can even just leave them out completely. Blah, 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 blah. Though some battle packs will require them. So you don't have to learn them all, apart from if you want to play these ones, which you do. Modularity is born from the idea that it was more than just a game, says Matt. It's essentially a platform that supports many types of... Now, this is business speak, right? Loads of businesses love the idea of running a platform to do stuff off. and Because it's like it's like eBay's a platform, for instance. For you know, Amazon is basically a platform. It's, uh, you know... But if you're playing Path to Glory, you don't need number six. What's number six? Battle tactics. You don't need battle tactics to play Path to Glory, but you do, like, <laughs> plus seasonal rules, which aren't a thing. <laughs> so it's just like, they say one thing, and then it's like, it just, you know, it, so are seasonal rules not one of these things, then? These are the seasonal rules. are. But do match play not a, seasonal rules? So do... So when we're reading the stuff later about like a general's bodyguard, does that not apply to match play then? Is that what this is saying? In which case, what's the point of the rules? Like, if they're not balanced, right? Why bother? <laughs> because and and why? Do, so game balance matters because like if you're playing a, a pickup game against somebody in like a club and you're like, oh, do you want to give me, yeah, yeah. And then you turn up and the rules massively favour them. They just win because rules. And that's a really, really negative play experience. Um, so, yeah, say for example, we find out during this course of a season of match play that the economy of command points isn't quite right. We don't need to issue an extra us. We could have a new general with a new command module that's both thematically resonant and helps evolve the internal balance. They could have done that anyway. Like, it, like, what is a module? Like, how does that actually work in the real world? It's a chapter in a book. I mean, they could have just swapped out the chapter for. Do you know what I mean? They don't. They basically. Oh. It's like they think like this. What somebody's done is somebody's gone to the rules writing team. Somebody from the business team has gone to the rules writing team and said, oh, do you know what? You're, you, this is quasi-legal, isn't it? Yeah, so what you should do is you should have, like, you know, treat each, like, bit as, like, a different act of parliament almost. And then you can just, like, swap bits out. Like, But it, all, all they're doing is they're just rewriting a chapter and saying this is the new chapter that goes in the rule book. But, like, they're not maintaining the rule book. Like you, you, you buy a physical book and it's just it's out of date as soon as it's printed. Like, you know, I think. Long story short, my advice is never, ever, ever buy a physical rule book unless you want the pictures, <laughs> because it's out of date as soon as it's printed. Like Games Workshop are just terrible for just printing out of date nonsense. You know, 
I mean, the books are great. They're lovely. They feel good. They smell good. There's something really special about the quality of the books that they produce. But the information within it, and the rules particularly, are out of date pretty much as soon as they're published. So I'm spending a lot of time whinging about Games Workshop this time, aren't I? I'm feeling very whingy about Games Workshop. I did do a video about Custodes as well. Because... Well, basically, I just don't know what they're trying to achieve. Like, 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 they say it's about inclusivity. It's like, yeah, but who are you being inclusive to? Like, how many, how many, how many ten foot behemoth? Like, what, what, why don't you try being inclusive by like, I don't know, let's have more female models in in like the Imperial Guard box, for instance, and so like be a bit more reflective of a modern military, which are about ten percent, twenty percent women at the moment. You know why? Why not? Why not do that? Why not have a few more GI Janes, like actual, real? You know, or or like why not just ask women, like you know, what they actually do want, like women who are on the peripheries of the hobby and aren't quite in it. Like what would what would get them to collect it? Why not ask them that question? Like, you know, why not do more book and model combo boxes? You know, because women quite like you know they quite like characters. You know, they quite like investing in the characters rather than investing necessarily in the in the thing of the model so like you know um you know why not why not develop product lines that are like um uh representative of of um of like uh feminine traits you know st stuff that's like about caring and tough and resilient and all those kind of all the really cool feminine traits like why not why not make armies more reflective of that rather than just sticking boobs on men like it just that to me just doesn't it just it, who are you trying to represent uh, and that's the thing that that, that i just don't get I, it just doesn't make sense and then also like if you're going to do it like why not just say that's what you're doing you know why not why not just say like, oh, we're doing this because we want to be more representative? Because they didn't say that. They said, oh no, it's always been like that. Shh. And it's like, but are you, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I just, I don't, I, I, it's just, it's just confusing more than anything. Um, did I want to talk about this at all? I mean, actually, this looks quite cool. More, more commands. Uh, you know, standard commands for everybody. They all look like the same. New commands. Rally. It's not a new command. Uh, it, well. It, rally is not a new command in and of itself. But it the way it works is different. It's, you make six rolls. Six, roll six D6. And for each four plus you can heal a unit. Or you can... Uh, heal whatever so Archeon's going to love doing this to <laughs> get his wounds back as is Nagash uh, it's not in combat though so you've got to keep him in combat to stop him from healing but uh, redeploy like they say new commands or new or revamped uh, redeploy so redeploy used to be if a unit ends within nine inches of you, then you can redeploy it. Now you can just redeploy a unit up to D6, which is okay, I guess. But, like, people will use that to be so annoying. Um, covering, yeah, I mean, you can shoot in your opponent's shooting phase, which will massively benefit some factions with really good shooting. Um... Yeah, he doesn't even have to be shot at. So, basically, I'm turning up with my Slaves to Darkness against somebody else's, like, I don't know, Lumineth or whatever. They just get to shoot for a command point. Just get to have a go at me and, you know, whatever. Um, oh, and they've got rid of Battleshock as well, haven't they? Which I just find really weird because, like, morale is no longer a, a consequence in AOS. Like, morale just doesn't... It doesn't exist apparently, like because everybody's always fighting to the death. Such is the desperation in the. It's like really, hmm. So fear is not a thing anymore, like, right? So 
everybody's undead and immune to fear. Good, good. <laughs> and nobody really dies and there's no consequences to anything. Right, good, good. This is going to go well, isn't it? <laughs> this is going to go really, really well. Right, anyway, well, that's me whinging about AOS and Warhammer and stuff. And uh, I'm I finally getting close to... Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this list. So, yeah, this is, these, these are the dwarves I'm going to be collecting now. Cool. All right, well... Um, um, I'll... Um, how long has this been going on? Bloody hell, it's been going on for 40 minutes. So, yeah, I, my plans... Uh, I'm going to keep doing the meta articles and then like covering whenever, um, you know, Warhammer come up with something to do with the old world. Um, the, the content production has like reduced a bit um, over the past, you know, I did record an hour and a half video on the, uh, on the uh, uh, custodies thing, but like, I did a poll and like most people said don't publish it so I haven't um so uh yeah so I don't I don't um not that I'm not upset by that at all uh you know it's not it's not that I just I just don't like it when people that I know you know well and people I respect fall out for no reason and that just seems to happen so much online. Like people you just know and love, just like decide that they don't like each other because they have a difference of opinion. And it's just it's so sad watching people say stuff like, "Oh, I hate this person because they've got different opinions." And it's just like, no, they've just got a different opinion. Like nothing happens when somebody has an opinion. I don't know what. I think it all, you know, in terms of like society starting to go wrong. You know, people say that a lot, and they're mostly over exaggerating. But I think when we started to, you know, when we started to consider words as being violence, you know, like that, that there are consequences. Words have power, and they are consequences. It's like, no, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words only have the power that you give them. Like, you can say whatever you like. To, like I've got a very thick skin. Um, you know, I've I've done politics. I've had people say some really horrible and disgusting things to me, and to be quite honest, I don't care because there's no consequence to somebody saying something to you. You know, you, the, the only the consequence to somebody saying something to you is what you allow them is the power that you give to words is the power that you've given to words. So, you know, if you've decided to. Um, you know, if, if you've decided that that person has really hurt you because they've said something, that's on you. You've decided that. Like, you know, that's not on... That's not really on them. That's your... That happened in here. That happened in here. That didn't happen out there. Um, you know, I play rugby. You're like you soon learn what violence feels like you know i've got a slightly broken ankle at the moment because of that so <laughs> you know it's it's a, it's a tough game um uh but um <laughs> you know it, it, the, like actual violence and like words as violence i don't get that i've never I, i've never maybe my skin's too thick maybe i'm too you know stiff upper lip British sort of you know I don't know um anyway what was I talking about oh yeah um so yeah I'm gonna do um, what I'm gonna try and do actually is a, is a lot more live shed talk sort of things so you know uh, you can chat with me whilst I'm swearing at models uh so that's what I plan to do later on today after work to be honest um yeah I need to pop to the games workshop for some reason and I can't remember why. But yeah, I'm gonna do gonna do more of that I think uh for now. Uh, until Games Workshop start to release some more stuff. But really like long term, like I I I don't know where the old world's gonna go really. Like I I think you know, there's still gonna be a tournament at least every weekend for me to talk about. 
releases aren't going to be very very frequent so it's just my hobby journey really isn't it that's that's what what ends up filling the channel isn't it i think long term um you know i don't want to talk about aos every time i just think the the i've been sort of stewing on aos for a while now um because i played that for a, a few years like competitively basically because it was the fancy thing and it had arcane in it um and Arcane's always been my favourite character. Um Yeah, always been my favourite character. So I I played AOS because 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 of that really. Um and you know, it was it's an okay game. It's alright, it's fun, but it's not it's just it's all it's a mess basically it is it is an absolute mess it's like 40k it's a mess like this there's, there's rules all over the place uh, contained in loads and loads of different books it's really difficult to find anything it's massively bloated there's like 40k of stratagems like it's just such a it's so difficult to understand how to actually win the game in 40k because it's just rules all over the place and then you've got cards on cards on cards. And, like, you know, this is the new chapter approved or was the new chapter approved thing. So, like, you know, I got that box. I've never played a game of 40k because I keep messing around with the points for Sisters of Battle, which is the faction I decided to go for. And, like, every time I got up to 2,000 points, they made everything cheaper. So I'm now 1,700. Sorry, I've not never played a game. I played one game against a really nice chap. Uh, with his orcs, uh, and uh, yeah, that went okay. That was it was quite it's quite a fun game, but like it is a mess. Whereas I think the old world, I'm really hopeful that they don't make it as messy. Like they try and keep it contained. Although the arcane journals, like I have seen a few posts online where people are like, "Where's the rest of the rules for this like faction?" Because I've just bought this orc and goblin book, and there's very little in it. Is this the whole? Um, <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, quite a, quite a lot of people said that when they were releasing it, that they probably should re-release the factions in the Arcane Journals and, like, not have the Arcane Journals as being, like, a bolt-on to the evil or the good guy book. But, you know, whatever. Uh, so, yeah... Games Workshop, making mistakes again. But they don't really have any competitors. So, you know, they can. Anyway, uh, so that's that's me. That's me uh, That's me done, I think, for this morning. Uh, I need to crack on and uh, get dressed and go to work. But, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. It, you know, if you've, uh, if you've liked the video, there's a... There's a oh, I'm sick and tired of saying this, really. But <laughs> if you like the video, there's a button for that. Uh, and if you've got this far, I hope this has earned your subscription, despite me whinging about the fact that... Um, that <laughs> and that's the other thing. Like, I don't know whether I want to... Like, Do I want to Do I want to monetize this? I don't think I do. I'm doing this for my own sanity, really. That's why I was a bit kind of miffed about people said no to my sort of stuff on the other things. So I was like, oh. But, like, that was cathartic recording, that. Um <laughs> But anyway, yeah, we'll probably talk about those issues a bit more in uh, in Shed Talk because I think that's more more people are interested in listening to me waffle on about bullshit for ages. Anyway, yes, uh, what did I say? Uh, goodbye. Uh, toodaloo. Have a great day. Alfie Design, Arrivederci. Uh, you keep passing more.